it's Laura from Doggy U, and today we're going to be teaching your dog how to spin. Besides spin being a really fun little trick that can be taught relatively easily and quickly, it's also a great trick for body awareness, proprioception, as well as engagement with your dog. It even helps with warm up before your dog's going to be doing activities and stretching. And I have a couple of little tricks that you might not know about teaching the spin and ways to take it to the next level. So let's get started. behavior. And the spin can be a really fun trick that can be taught in just a couple of short sessions, or it can be the foundation to more complicated spinning type behaviors. I have a couple different ways that I teach this as far as tricks that you may not have seen uh, in other videos, so I want to show you that right now. For this behavior, we will be using a luring technique. This means your dog will follow your cookie in your hand like a magnet. To start with, I use a D shape instead of a circle, and here's why. When I teach this behavior, I want my dog to be really clear about what I'm asking them, and doing that D shape helps them get all the way around. This is especially important for your larger dogs. So maybe you can do a little spin right in front of you with your smaller dogs, but with dogs that you really need their butt to come all the way around, it's helpful to have this D position. So I'm gonna go straight back, around, and click when they get back to my knee. So let me show you that again. So you've got your D, goes straight back, then the curvy part of the D, and reward, okay? So this is how I start this behavior. The click is for getting to my knee. I wanna also make sure that I'm doing this on both sides. I'm gonna switch hands, go straight back, around, and to my knee, okay? Straight back, around, and to my knee. Your dog will likely have a side that's better than the other. So you'll find that one side is easier for your dog. That means the other side might be a little bit stiffer. So you might want to do more reps on the side that the dog is struggling with so that they can loosen up and limber up a little bit. I use separate hands so my dog can better understand which direction they want to turn when I first start this. So I'll use my right hand for this side and my left hand for this side. Now, your dog may not be able to spin all the way around as quickly as Whip did right there because she's done this before. So you may have a dog that you need to break this behavior down for, and that's okay. You're gonna use a quarter technique. So we're gonna take that D shape and we're gonna reward here, 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 and then by my knee to complete the circle, okay? You'll probably find that once you've done that a couple times, you can start doing just two rewards. So you can do facing away, and then facing forward, okay? So breaking that behavior down for those dogs that struggle, especially on the opposite end with the turnaround, will help them get away from you. <laughs> we lost the cookie over there. And then back forward, okay? Then pretty quickly you'll have a full spinning behavior. I wanna reward when my dog is facing me at the knee. So same thing goes for the other side. I'm gonna grab my four cookies so I can break it down. So I go here, 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 and then all the way back to my knee. Beautiful. The D shape can also help with some more complicated tricks. Like if I want her to scoot back between my legs, she already has a recollection of doing this straight back thing. So I can do my here, and then she's used to that. So I'll pull her here, and she's already practically under my legs. So that D position to start with can help get that little scoop. So she knows I draw back and then she's practically in position. Good girl, very nice. So once you have the basic spin down, adding a platform can be helpful to teach the dog how to think where he's placing his feet and create a tighter spin. So Jake, in, in typical catalog fashion, is uh, very boisterous and throws his body into tricks, whereas Whip thinks a lot more about what she's doing. So I'm gonna put Jake up on the platform and ask for the spin, so he has to think about all of his feet placement so that he doesn't fall off of the platform. So I'm gonna ask Jake, spin. <laughs> yes, okay, so see there how he wasn't paying attention and his foot fell off the platform? Let's do that again and see if he can keep all of his feet on the platform. And I also have, um, the blue nine has like this little traction mount on it to keep him uh, secure on the climb. So Jake, spin. Yes. So there he was able to keep all his feet on the platform um, and really think about what he was doing. Jake, twist. Yes, very 
very nice, much better. So after that first incident, he's doing much better. Twist. Yes. Excellent. So now that I've got him here up on the platform, and say you want to go ahead and fade that cookie. So say you're at the point where you're still taking your cookie, you're luring the dog around, and then you're releasing, you're clicking and releasing there. I want to start basically fading that lure. Now this isn't going to be a video on fading the lures, but I just want to show you how to do that quickly. So I start with the cookie in the hand like a magnet. Uh, I'm going to do one rep with the cookie. So I'm going to bring him around. Yes. And reward. I seem to have lost my clicker during the break, so we're going to use yes from now on. Uh, and then I'm going to take my ghost cookie. So I reach in, grab my ghost cookie, turn him around. Yes. Reward. Okay. Ghost cookie. Yes. Reward. Very nice. Once your dog is doing it with your ghost cookie, then you're not going to go and get your ghost cookie this time. You're just going to use your hand. I like to use one finger, and I'm going to spin my finger around. Yes. Until I can get a tight circle to spin my dog, or just kind of a flick of the wrist. Beautiful. Very nice. And once you have it on just the flick of your wrist, then you can add the verbal cue. I do have a video on how to add verbal cues, so I'll put that down below so that you can find it. Uh, but basically, you're going to go from cookie to ghost cookie to turning that into a full hand signal and then onto a verbal cue. Whip spin. Whip spin. Twist. Twist. Spin. Yes. Once you have your spin down on the, on the floor, as well as up on a platform, you can also use a toy to get a faster, tighter spin. A lot of dogs who are motivated by toys are going to work a little bit harder, a little bit faster, as soon as you bring a toy into the equation. So you can also work on adding the toy as the reward. So why don't you get started right now? No, I'm serious. Pause this video. Do it. Are you pausing? <laughs> All right. So you guys have an awesome day. If you have any questions, put them below or comments or videos you'd like me to do. Make sure you put them in the comments. Make sure you like this video so other people can find these videos and subscribe and hit that little bell button. You guys have a great day with your dogs and happy training. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Subscribe now and never miss an episode.